Welcome back. We're uh, on the last lesson of this chapter in Insects and Spiders, and I think from my picture you can guess what we're going to be talking about today. Yes, we're going to be talking about spiders and how they are not insects and they are much different from insects. And we will do some comparison today as we see in our book. Um, just to do a little review, uh, how many parts uh, or how many body sections uh, on an insect? If you guess three, that is correct. Head, thorax, abdomen. And then where is the antenna? Okay, if you guessed on the head, that is correct. And also the mouth part is on the, on the head. Where would you find the wings and the legs? If you said the thorax or the middle section, that is correct. And then where would they digest food? And that would be the bottom part, the abdomen. Also, if that insect had a stinger, that's where the abdomen would, I mean, that's where it would be located on the abdomen. So let's go ahead and get right into our lesson and then we'll talk about the parts uh, of a spider. Before we start reading, I have some vocabulary words on the web of our spider. Uh, we have this word, let's say it, arachnid. One more time, arachnid. This word, pedipalps, pedipalps. All right, and then the last one over here on the web, spinnerets one more time spinnerets you might not be able to see that let me turn the camera just a little bit so you can see that that is one of your vocabulary words spinnerets okay all right we're on page 46 and we'll be going through page 49 in our books follow along as i read some spiders i'm sorry let's try that again some people may think spiders are insects but they are not Spiders are arthropods, and let's stop there just for a moment. What is the classification of, uh, of an arthropod? There were five things about an arthropod. Well, one, it has an exoskeleton, and that exoskeleton has to molt. Third, it's an invertebrate. Fourth, it has jointed legs, and then it has body sections. Now, it can have two body sections or three body sections but it would have body sections. So the spiders are one group of arthropod. Spiders are arthropods with two body parts and eight legs. The stages of a spider's life cycle are egg, nymph, adult. So it has kind of an incomplete metamorphosis. Spiders are part of a group of arthropods called arachnids. Okay, the, we have that vocabulary word in the web, arachnid. Scorpions, daddy long legs, and a daddy long legs kind of looks like a spider, but it's not really classified as a spider. Uh, but it has super, super long legs. Uh, mites, and those are very, very tiny insects, and ticks are also arachnids. They have certain characteristics uh, that maybe I'll explain at another time uh, that make them different uh, than other species that kind of look the same. All right, so they're all grouped in this group called arachnids, but the biggest part of that group is definitely spiders. Let's keep going. Let's talk about its body, what it looks like. Body characteristics. Like an insect, a spider has an exoskeleton and jointed legs, but a spider has only two body parts. The head and thorax of a spider are joined into one section called a cephalothorax. Let's say that word together, cephalothorax. One more time, cephalothorax. So we have head, thorax, and abdomen on an insect, but on a spider, it's only two parts, cephalothorax, and that's that part right up here, and the abdomen up here. This, the abdomen is the second body section. A spider has four pairs of legs, and a pair means two, so it has a total of eight. It does not have antenna, but it does have two leg-like parts called pedipalps on its head. Uh, a spider uses this pedipalps to hold its prey while it injects venom or poison with its fangs. So uh, we're going to talk about how it catches food in just a moment, but all spiders have some type of poison. And in order to uh, get the food that they need, they have to kind of paralyze or 
make the insect or whatever creature they're eating to stop moving. And so they'll use these things called the pedipalps, and that's one of our vocabulary words, that holds whatever they're eating, uh, the insect or small animal, and then they've got fangs. I drew kind of a little picture of fangs here, and it injects or kind of like a needle, puts poison in, the, in its victim or its uh, prey, and then the whatever it's going to eat cannot move after that. Uh, so let's keep going. Let's look on page 47. Catching food. Spider uses instincts. I'm going to use that word before. Instinct means a knowledge or skill they're born with to catch the food they need. Unlike insects, spiders do not eat plants. They eat other animals, mostly insects, so they're carnivorous. But all spiders do not get their food in the same way. God created them to catch food in different kinds of ways. Perhaps you have run into a spider's web. Oh, I've done that, and you get the sticky strings all over your face. And it got the sticky threads on your face. The sticky threads are just a bother to you, but they're very important to the spider. They help the spider catch food. A spider's web is made of silk, that a spider produces or makes inside its body. The silk comes out through a tiny tubes, uh, tiny tubes called spinnerets. That's our third vocabulary word. And that's located here. You might not be able to see it. Maybe I'll color it in red. They're tiny little tubes on their abdomen. Okay. And this is how they make their spider web. At first, the silk is a thick liquid. You can kind of think of it as glue. Uh, kind of the consistency of glue. And when it hits the air, it dries into a strand of string. I don't know if maybe you have um, played with this before, but have you ever played with silly string? You shake a can and you spray and the string comes out. Well, inside the can, it's a liquid, but when it hits the air, it does a chemical reaction and makes it a solid. It's kind of the same thing here. It's kind of got silly string inside of it. And uh, it injects it through its spinnerets, and when it hits the air, it becomes hard. But inside its body, it's liquid. So when it hits the air, it dries into a thin strand of silk. The spider uses its spinnerets to weave the silk strands into threads of silk for its web. And shows you a picture of its web. And my spider here has got a web up here. Um, that's the way most spiders uh, catch their food. A spider's web seems or looks fragile but is actually quite strong. In fact, it is much stronger than most man-made fibers. In fact, if you've ever been in a storm when the wind is blowing really hard, spider webs usually don't fall down. It can stay up during those very strong winds. Uh, an insect that touches the sticky threads of the web gets caught, and uh, the insect cannot get loose because of the threads, and it becomes the spider's meal. So here, the spider's waiting usually in a corner, and an insect's not paying attention, and it flies into the web, and this, these threads, the silk, is very, very sticky, and the insect can't get away. And so, haha, the spider feels the, the web moving, and it will crawl down and use its pedipalps to hold the insect or whatever gets caught in its web, and then with its fangs, He'll inject it with venom or poison to paralyze it or it can't move. And then maybe if he's not hungry at that point, maybe she, uh, he or she, I'm not sure, you can call this whatever you want, boy or girl, uh, will wrap it in silk and maybe save it for later. But if it's hungry, uh, now it will not eat the animal or eat the insect. It will just drink its blood. All right, let's move on to the next page. Now, there are other ways. I said not all spiders use uh, a web to catch their food. There are other ways uh, they catch their food. Spinning webs is one way a spider gets their food. But spiders have other ways or other methods. A trapdoor spider digs a hole into the ground. It builds a hidden door made of silk from their spinnerets and soil. The spider stays just under the partly open door. And when an insect gets close, the spider jumps out and grabs it. <laughs> I, I do that with my students and they jump really high every year. 
Uh, so that's what we call the trapdoor spider. It makes a door out of soil and silk, and it digs a hole, and it waits for a, an insect to crawl by for it to catch it, and that will be its next meal. A fishing spider is a large, hairy spider that catches food by fishing for it. The fishing spider sits on a plant near a stream or a pond and it dangles or it, like maybe this is the land or maybe this is a plant that the, the spider sits on and it puts its leg into the water, kind of like a fishing pole. All right. Uh, it dangles uh, a leg into the water to detect or find any movement made by insects or larvae. When it feels a movement, the spider can walk on the surface of the water to get its food. Though it eats mostly insects, the fishing spider also eats small fish. If needed, uh, it can go underwater and use its fangs to poison a fish. The spider then drags its catch ashore or onto the beach or under the land to eat it. Okay, so this is what we call the fishing spider. It doesn't use a web. It uses its leg to see if it can feel any movement. And when it does, it goes in after it. And it can, what's really cool is this spider can walk on water. Now, this is probably one of the scariest looking ones, but there's actually one of the more gentle of the spiders. This is another large hairy spider is the tarantula. A tarantula is a fearsome looking hunter. It hunts at night by chasing its prey. Tarantulas eat insects, but these spiders are also large enough to eat other animals. They may eat vertebrates such as toads, frogs, snakes, lizards, or even small birds. Now that's a big spider if it can eat uh, creatures that big. And, but it will hunt at night, and when it catches it with its pedipalps, it will put poison into whatever it catches and then probably just drink its blood. The last one, uh, poisoning. Now, I, I want to go back just a second before we go to the last page. So the four ways spiders catch food, using a web, fishing, uh, the trap door, and hunting. Okay, But it says poison on the next page. But remember, all spiders have some type of poison. And they all use poison to catch their food. Okay? So page 49. Almost all spiders use poison to kill their prey. Once a spider catches its prey, the spider injects poison or venom. The poison causes the victim or the food it's going to eat to be unable to move. Then the spider eats its catch. But mostly it's just drinking the blood out of the, of the animal it caught. Sometimes a spider bites a person, but the poison of most spiders is not harmful to people. However, the brown recluse spider and the black widow are, uh, spider are two spiders that, I'm sorry, two spiders whose poison is dangerous to people. Both spiders are found in North America. They usually live in dark, quiet places. The bites of these spiders can cause severe illness or sickness and sometimes death. So it shows you these two pictures on here. These two, um, uh, I don't have any personal experience seeing these two in person, but I know my father-in-law got bit by a brown recluse and his hand swelled up very, very, very large and he had to be taken to the hospital. And if he didn't get help, um, it could have caused his skin to rot or he could have lost his life. Um, these spiders are extremely dangerous. The brown recluse spider, you'll notice on, on its uh, cephalothorax, there is a brown shaped, uh, it looks like a violin. So it's a large brown spider, and on its cephalothorax, it has a violin or guitar shape. Um, if you see that, you stay away. Don't mess with it. But again, they like to hide. They don't like to be around other people. They'll be in dark, quiet places. And then the other one, the black widow, You'll notice it has a very, very large abdomen, and on the bottom of its abdomen, it has like a red bow tie shape. And if you see that, you'll know that's a black widow. That's also very, very poisonous and dangerous to humans. Um, so uh, if you happen to see those, and probably, maybe you won't because again, they like dark, quiet places, um, stay away, run away. Don't even 
try to take a picture of it. Just leave it alone. Now, if you do get bit by a spider, any spider, and it could happen, the best thing to do is to wash it, make sure it is clean, and then pay attention. If it starts to swell up um, and the swelling doesn't go away within two days, or maybe you start to get a fever and you start to get a stomach ache, you should go to the doctor. But if you get bit and you wash it, put some ice on it to, to soothe it, and it goes away, then you shouldn't have any problem. But anytime you get bit by an adult, uh, by, a, by a spider, you should always tell an adult, uh, just in case there might be a little bit of problems. Uh, but if you look for these signs, if you get bit by a spider, you'll know what to do. The last paragraph. Insects and spiders may be small and uh, seem small and unimportant, but God designs each part of his creation. He cares for even his smallest creatures. Learning about the small parts of God's creation can be important in serving God and others. That's what beekeepers do. So a little bit of other side note. This is really important. Maybe you don't like spiders, and I'm not a fan of spiders too, even though there are many different spiders that look very beautiful. But spiders are extremely important. If there were not spiders, insects would cover the earth. And who would want to, as you're eating, be, you know, flies or any other kinds of insects getting into your food or getting into your bed? So we can thank the spider. God understood that we needed to control the population of insects. And so because of spiders, they, uh, the population is controlled and they're not covering everything. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, chapter on insects and spiders. Uh, there's a little bit of homework that you can do. Uh, is page 49, there's two questions. And then in your activity manual, on page 22, you can finish the spider part. And then on activity manual page 39, there's something that you can do to review uh, uh, this chapter. Also on page 40, those are good review pages to help you to understand and then to get ready for the test that's going to come uh, when you finish studying chapter 2. I'll see you in chapter 3. Have a good day.